Hey everyone, welcome back to our second very special episode. How I quote this? I don't know how. All the ways. All the way. Using thread. That's my suggestion. That is also a bonus. There you go. All right, so let's dive into it. And if you missed, check out the little link in the upper corner, and you can link back to that one. But let's dive in. All right, we are here. First quote, which is a one block wonder from Deborah. Now, I will say I had no idea that at least half our fans are named Deborah or some form thereof. So, it's a great name. Sure. It is. I literally didn't have any Deborahs or Debs or Debbies in my life until really kicked off. <laughs> and then suddenly they're everywhere. No, my next door neighbor's Deb, my mother in law's Deb. I got I, a lot I, of Debbies. I work with the Deb. A lot of Debbies. So, uh, one of many Debbies. And we love them all. We do. Uh, a one block wonder quilt is done by taking uh, typically six of one type of pan or a very busy print fabric. and yeah a fabric and you end up with these lovely hexagonal blocks which are more hexagonal than that you know <laughs> slightly more even and uh, just in case you can't tell this is like that's why it's got this kind of weird angle thing happening so because it is difficult to do quilting design in here because of the amount of print happening. That is one of the things I would say. So I you, agree. So you can either go in with a contrast thread and try and force that, which hmm, may not be the best, or you can just lean in and pick a motif and start replicating that throughout. When I've done a one block wonder before, uh, where I've had success is where it just kind of looks like a field of red is doing an all over pattern. And my go-to is a meander, I think a little paisley, but you do that and then you start picking select blocks that kind of stand out in the design to custom quilt. So for me, it's this block here, where I'm gonna come and I'm gonna X that with like a little fun motif and then you're gonna come back out and travel to your next area. I think this is another one where you do that. I wanna say this one to me is very prominent. Yeah because it's got negative space happening there. Right. And I think this one too stands out a bit. And so we eliminate that one. That gives us four that kind of stand out. Now design rules numbers work right. better. Yeah. So I kind of think this one up here is maybe another one to call out attention to. And then if you do it in all over and all and you could do a white or you could do like a, an orange, which I think would blend Absolutely. between the background and and dense red part over here once you get done filling all that in you know you can mix it up and break it up and just treat these boards so you could do pebbles our favorite um, <laughs> they just take a long time that's the only thing I don't like about them and if you were wanting to do something because this is solid prints so you're gonna see the quilting design more here you could lean into those flower designs and do that here in the border oh yeah that's a great idea yeah, I like that idea. That's what I got. What That's you got. what you got. And I agree with Pam completely in that a one-block wonder, there, the reason you even do a one-block wonder is because you want the fabric to stand out. So this is not a quilt that I think needs to be the most important thing. So if I go to all over design is, um, what did you call it? I call it clamshells. Oh, sleeves. This is no that scale or slightly smaller. I would do this smaller. I'm okay. just doing smaller than the piece, the the piece that's a sixth of the hexagon. So it's a triangle yeah. piece that you get. Make your clamshell smaller than that. Yeah. Not to scale. Not to scale, but I want you to see it. Um, yeah, this is this would be like you could do that, and that's probably to scale of how I would really, but not to scale with his picture. Correct. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, so I would do something like that all over. I like your separating out. If you really do want to custom quilt this, custom border, custom quilt this inner border. Don't because this is such easy. Um, quilt and because that's why one block wonders are cool is 
you want the quilt you want the fabric to be the star not the quilting so i'm all in for doing an all over a clamshell or a you know you could do um some machine if you really wanted to change it up do clamshell in like one and then the next over do you know something like um another like a spiral. meander like a spiral yeah that would be kind of cool in it um and then but i wouldn't do anything i wouldn't do anything like really with linear lines or anything i would that would take too much time to see it so we want you to the fabrics the star that's yes. my yeah that's what i'm thinking and this is from deborah yes thank you now let us take a slight left turn Slight left turn. Also hexagons. It is. This is from De not Deborah. Okay. Uh, I think all the the Deb quilts are up here at the front. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this is an English. We hope paper you know who you are. Yes. Uh, this is an English paper. So a lot of work. So a lot of work went into this. And probably Hand fussy work. cutting. Oh yeah. And yeah. And you, and she's got the binding. She already quilted it, and she's just wanting us to tell you. Oh, her. no. So, like, there's some sneakers. If you've already quilted it, you've done a great job, and you don't need our help. Perfect. We're done. Yay, we're done. Yeah. Uh, for this, I'm going to lean into the shape that you've got going on made by the diamonds. Mm, I like that. So, stitching the ditches hard with the English paper piece because your seam you is pressed open, and there's ditch you're just right. kind of stitching through thread, thread which is not the most secure thing so I would do a quarter inch outside which is going to be harder to see at this scale but you really off those stars by quilting a quarter inch to the outside okay or even an eighth of an inch maybe well to the outside or the inside I would say to the outside all right because I want it to raise up a little bit <laughs> I want to have my hand towards the camera. Uh, the king hands. That's an old callback. <laughs> I watched that guy in a new uh, show the other day. Well, and especially considering you've got one that's bigger out here, and there's a slightly different in here. So one, after you outline that, I think it depends on what you've got going on inside. It looks like these are all fussy cuts because they're kind yeah. of giving a kaleidoscope effect, and I think you you mirror that with what your quilting is. And so... You know, whether you're doing like a little paisley, and let me, let me do it so you can actually see it. Like that. And like one curls around the other, and then one's kind of straight. Oh, I like that. So there would be six. You can see I've only done five, but fine. And that gets you enough quilting that you're going to secure your piece but it's not going to detract what you've got going on with those design motifs and then i think you could just mimic that shape here in the outer border as well just kind of repeat that paisley swirl thing all right first of all if this is english paper piecing congratulations <laughs> because i am not good at it so this is it looks like this is how you did this it looks like it's um, so it's a diamond shape, right? Man, this is me remembering how to draw. Yes, those. Feel like this is kind of the diamond shape, right? Yes? Yes. Okay, so, um, I, I will tell you that traditionally English paper piecing is what they call to the piece. So if you were hand quilting this, and I know we haven't talked about hand quilting, but um, you've spent a lot of time with this. I'm not saying that hand quilting may not be the best option here. I'm doing some big stitch quilting on a version of mine that has this same. Right. So what what is very common? And English paper piecing that you see with hand quilting is what they call to the piece. So you would do a quarter of an inch inside of every piece. And that's all the quilting that you would do. 
I'm not saying that this is what you want to do. This would be, you spend a lot of time um, together. There's nothing wrong with you wanting to do some hand quilting to have your whole quilt hand quilted. Um, that would be to the piece. That would be very traditional, very common. Now, I guess if I were doing this custom, I like what Pam suggested in that you're going to mimic whatever the design is in each of these blocks. Um, so if it's a swirl, you're going to do a swirl. If it's a pointed, you're going to do pointed. And I would let the me what kind of shape I'm going to do and just kind of mimic what that is. And that's how I would quilt it. So I would be custom. I would do that. These, these edges, you know, there are a lot of really templates that you can use with the chalk um, uh, dust. I guess it's like chalk. Right? Chalk pounce. Yeah, it's a pounce thing. <laughs> and um, what I would do is I would almost divide up this area with the chalk pounce thing. And I would almost mimic some of these um, paisley shapes like out into here you know I don't know keep those diamond shapes in there maybe do a diamond shape in there and then I would do the diamond differently quilt down more and then leave that open but I would divide it up and somehow give me because those are really wide borders so there's a lot of space to you create design within that space um, and you're already doing some of that with the um, and it would be really interesting to see some you know straight you know have a here and this be back and forth and um, you know just up some way and then give yourself where it runs into these designs on the outside edge which I really like and do something unique in these two borders whether it's ribbon candy which we've talked about before and ribbon candy if you haven't seen that, ribbon candy is the um, do you guys remember this candy it was striped ribbon candy or I like the L's which Pam calls wishbones Those are really fun to do. And then there's always the the circles. What's nice about them is, you know, you can do those pretty fast, especially in a So that'd be fun. That's nice. my thank you. Who's this? This is Deb. Debbie. Debbie. Now. Now. We're taking a right turn out of Debbie land. <laughs> we're coming back to it, y'all. We're not out of Debbie's yet. Okay. So, uh, we're going to look at Angie's sampler. So, uh, this didn't have a name, but it looks like kind of a typical block of the month program. That it does. You might see. Yeah. So, I've done similar to these at our local quilt shop. So the way that I've typically finished these is say, okay, I'm going to do one design in all of my background. And so, out here in the field, again, my go-to is just a lovely old jigsaw puzzle meander. And you end up doing that in the block backgrounds as well. And I will say, one of the things that you can do is find where you've got your um, seam here on this blue surround, and you enter your meander through there. And then if you're using a white thread, you come back with a blue marker and you just color that over, and then you never see that you traveled in there. <laughs> it's true. Thread. It's totally <laughs> true. We've done it. On camera. I've had a second it's in shows. I got a second place ribbon on one that's got marker on it. So that's a little pro tip. Yeah, there stitch. you go. Pro tip right there. <laughs> and then I think you could do something that we've talked about actually on the last How Should I Quilt This episode where you're like, okay, all of my blues are going to get the same design. I want all the blues to have switchbacks. Or given this design, if you really want to simplify say, oh, I want all the squares to have orange peel design. And so um, you kind of travel in here with your thread and come up. And then you do an orange peel, and it looks better if you stitch in the. And then you say, okay, and then I want my triangles to get switchbacks. And so switchbacks are just, you know, vertical up and down, or, you know, horizontal. And so that's another easy way that gives you, 
it's custom, but you don't have to put a lot of in planning into it. You just say like, all right, squares get orange peel and triangles get switchbacks. And then you just go about your merry way and then you're done. You cool. just work your way around. Well, I like that. That is my sampler tip. All right. So if we're doing a sampler, then what if we did some quilting? That's hard. It is hard, but it could be fun. So what if I take a basic pattern? So um, let's say you want to get better at, at, um, at feathers. So I'm going to take one block and I'm going to do feathers inside that block, right? And there's a bunch of different ways to do feathers. Some people do um, bumps feathers. Now here's what I do with feathers that I really like is because I'm not good at traveling, well I am, but I'm going to make my vine super big. You like a fat vine. I like a fat vine. And you know why I like a fat vine? Because I'm not going to be particular about my feathers. Now these are perfect, and guess what? That's okay. Because I'm going to decorate them. So let's say I'm going to do this kind of basic for all of these blocks. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it up every time I go in there. Better at feathers every because you've got 12 of these and you're gonna do this. So, on the first one, I'm gonna go in and do a, a pearl like circles, it's pebbles, but in a line, yeah, pearls. So, that's what I'm gonna do on the first one, and then on the next one, I'm gonna do zigzags. And do you do anything different in the feathers? Yeah, sure. So, in the some of the feathers, I can just do a circle back out. Some of the feathers I'm going to do a hook. Some of the feathers I'm going to do a little circle. <coughs> Sorry. And then some of the feathers I'm going to just do echo a feather and then come in and out. Some of the feathers I'm going to do a flame out. Some of the feathers I'm going to do a flame and then a circle and then out. So feather. So you can see where I'm going to do a hook. Keep going. I'm going to do a hook, <laughs> hook, More. out. Hook, circle, hook, out. That looks kind of like a fleur de lis. I'm going to do a flame. <coughs> Sorry, I got choked up on something. I'm excited about this. That's what it is. She's overcome. I have right. other feelings. So, so, but if you do that consistently, flames and all the one, or circles and all the one, or whatever, then it's going to look so unique, just like you've spent all that time looking unique. This is going to look unique. And the other thing that you can do is you can echo. Echo is my favorite because it gets you out of trouble. I know. Echo's your favorite? Echo is my favorite. Echo's your favorite. Echo. Is there an echo in here? But you can do this like with an echo I mean, and be like crazy. crazy yeah. And would you use those kind of hook out swirl thingies to fill in like the corners of the block? Sure. Because, yeah, you know, exactly. Then let's say you got bored with that and you wanted to come back in. That's crazy talk. You know, you could put pebbles in your echoes. Oh, but, mayhem. Okay, here's what you need to think. You need to think Tim Burton. No. When you're doing this kind of stuff. Because if you think about all of his films and stuff, he did like really funky stuff making. So I think this would be a great practice piece. And I'm not saying this is a practice quilt, but remember, we're always practicing for our next one. You did different feathers in each one of these, man. By the end of this, you're gonna be you're gonna have feathers down. It'll be great. A quilt. It'll be awesome. You can do 16 different versions of feathers and be creative, like flames and hooks and dots and circles. Who's to say that you can't go in and do? You know, all these can be. This could be unique in each one. These can be unique in each one. You can make echo within it, you know, do the clamshells within the feather. So then when you do stuff like that, even feathers may not look perfect, man, they're going to look snazzy. So people won't know that your feathers aren't perfect. So that's what you do. There you go. Angie, that's my sister's name. That's not her quilt, but that's my sister's. I know it's not because Angie doesn't quilt. My sister Angie doesn't quilt. All right. So next up. Bridget has provided us with a lovely 
3D quilt. I know. And her specific comment was, I'd love to emphasize or preserve the 3D elements. Okay. I, I, this is one of the ones that I noticed right away. And you're probably going to do exactly what I'm going to do. It's radiating lines? Yep. Yeah. You want to do ruler work on this quilt. Yeah. And so what I've just drawn looks like it's a not meant to be. It's meant to be angular. Nice squeaky marker. That's a good time. <laughs> and it's going to require some marking. Yes. You're going to want to stitch in the ditch on all of these pieces. Yes. And where you've got the shadow, I would come in with black thread and definitely fill that in with wax. So it's definitely depressed. Not in yes. a sad sense, but in a gonna nail it down yes. and what would really make this cool is if you double batted it because this has got the opportunity to have some really cool dimension which means if you really heavily quilt some areas and not touch other areas you'll have dimension and what's if you double bat it which means you're going to put cotton on the bottom and the wool on top or poly poly wool's my favorite um it's going to have the wool or poly has this spring back mm -hmm. and you'll really see it. So if that takes care of the 3D elements, what about out here in the border? Why don't you dive in and talk about the border thing? Well, to the 3D elements, I think a little bit different. I'm not so sure that I wouldn't come in here. And this may be a great thing to do on some of these. I would move this to the outside edge, like here, right? I would do that on this side, and on here, I would almost mimic. It would kind of be interesting to do this. Right? To do that, like, mm -hmm. and come in this way, down this way, and come in this way, come in this way. Now, the these borders, I, I would, I would... I would divide all this stuff up, and here's kind of what I'm kind of what I'm thinking. I can't talk with a thing in my mouth. See, I don't want to write on this. See how this I divided up this border, and then I did a sideways ribbon candy, and then a switchback. By the way, this looks like it's ruler work, and it's not. It's just when you're on a long arm, like that straight line. If you move over the width of your um, foot and go straight again, you've already made very even straight lines. It's really easy to do straight lines on that. So I would divide up, I would mark this border, divide it up, and then I would treat each of these kind of like you're doing these, um, I would just mimic all of these done gotcha. thing. And I think that will look super cool. But what's gonna pull this off is heavy quilting where you're not want something to stand out. So all this background, need to, it, where these are like puffing out, all the background needs to be heavy quilted, whether it's just a meander or it's a shell shape or it's a, you know, we talked about the box thing, I think in the last episode, but I would do super heavy, small, tight. Super hot heavy small tight I like this quilt I, I can't wait to see this one quilted Bridget that's just cool. all right you're gonna keep us going I we're am. going back to Debbie town <laughs> I, this one I, when I saw this one come in I was like wow there's a lot of room for custom quilting in this um, I think there's a lot of room for personalization yes so I want to I want to personalize this some way, whether it says something in these stars. And I know we talked about doing um, in the last episode. We talked about how you can take a, you know, um, my name's Lynn, of course, but how I could take a letter or a font that I like, and um, once that's in the like say that's in the middle of the star, I trace it. And then I quilting behind it, and that makes that pop. That's one option. It needs to say hope, love, whatever, somebody's name. That's cool. Um, but you also, I think, have a really 
thing here where you could do some cool graffiti quilting, you know, and do some uh, you know, make an arrow kind of thing, which would I think be super cool. Um, and then I think that it would be neat if you're filling this in from the background, I think you could do some heart, you know, meander. I have to think about that more. I think you want to come in on the heart meander at the top. So you're going to come into the meander here and do your heart and then get out of it. I think that's how I want to come in to do a heart meander. Um, so you could do a heart meander. That would be kind of, uh, but you could also like, you know, write in here, write a poem, write scripture, you know, uh, encouragement kind of thing. Um, I kind of like the idea of the background. I can't tell. Is the background here I think that's or, the batting. It looks like she was Oh okay, so oh, okay, so this is the edge of it. I think it would be kind of interesting to have really long straight lines. Not in the heart, but in every place that's not the heart. Like matchstick? Yeah, almost like matchstick. Yeah, and except for when you're doing this, you know, and yeah. then do all of this matchstick which is just straight lines, which is harder than people realize. Dude, that is harder than people realize. It is. And then when you get in here, you either fill it with a heart meander or write something, or I wouldn't quilt this as much if I did matchstick back there, though. What do you think? Yeah, I think that get sense. out of your way. So I'm inclined, like you, to do something to emphasize like the stars look like a banner and banners are typically signage or trying yeah, to convey they're saying, information. yeah i agree and the other thing i like about it and you didn't mention it was the dark triangles that give oh. the impression that it's wrapping around the heart oh yeah good point and so if we're carrying that motion through i think there's a way to kind of use quilting to echo the idea that this is a banner and here's where we see my drawing skills are worth anything. They are. But you could continue that in what I call ghost quilting, where you're continuing the shape. Um, but I think you could uh, Google what ribbons look like <laughs> instead of relying on this video and kind of mimic that shape down here, kind of bring that ribbon motif further in. On the stars themselves, in the absence of knowing, oh, is this for a specific person? To me, I would do that thing Lynn suggested, but I would do like just hearts inside the stars and then quilt down everything and let the heart inside the star puff out. Oh, cool. Yeah, that'd look good. And then you would want to stitch in the ditch just to make that good as well. And then you're kind of outlining all the things. And the heart itself. I know, I'm struggling a bit because I like the idea of the graffiti quilting, but if the thinking here is that, you know, it is the thing being encompassed. Mm hmm. Yeah. By the star. The star hug. There's star hugs on the heart. I like it. <laughs> okay, I'm with you. What Let's kind of go. things do you hug? Pillows, animals. Yeah. Your sweet baboo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> e, I hug Mikey. I also kind of love the idea that maybe the heart is hugging back. Oh, okay. And if you're going to be a little crazy, you give it a little face. Like, Aww. it's so happy to be hugged. <laughs> you That's kind of fun. Little, especially because this, to me, the color choices say maybe it's going to a kid. And I think they appreciate Yeah, it could, a little, a little I think it re reads not juvenile, but younger, preteen yes. maybe. And I think you can have a little fun with it, you know, give the heart person. Have right. a hug back, like yay, I'm being. Hugged. It could be for a lot of things, though. It could yeah. be for, you know, someone's gone through a cancer scare, or someone's gone through a, you know, some kind of medical issue. Um, 
baby. This could be a lot of things. It could be baby. It could be medical issue. It could be. It could be for just, Valentine's Day. It could be for Valentine's Day. <laughs> I, I mean. But I think that same kind of technique that you use here in the star works. So whatever the motif is that you're putting in, you that puffy. Like you do right. the outline, leave the rest of it puffy, and you're densely quilting inside of it. Now, I have also been known to just like full lean in and mimic the shape and so you come in and you are like echoing yeah that, it's just going to reinforce what that is which is another lovely way to kind of you know re-emphasize that especially if you're using you could use a variegated thread here oh, there's a lot of like cool. red to pink variegated that would look really cool and you know because you've got a solid that'll really show up i like that you are really leaning into the heart mode and adding it in here and mm -hmm. echoing it. Yeah, that's a really good idea. I think that's great. And then I'm out of ideas, so I just made it to the background. All right, made it to the background. <laughs> and when you don't know, is this the one we're doing next? And we are still in Debbie Town. So Debbie! Stop in Deb Town. Wait, I need a marker. Debbie. Okay. So, this is a Moda kit, I think. It's a digitally printed snowman panel. All the little so I think the way this is made is this is put on yes. here. So this is all one that piece. Is a big thing. Just so everybody understands, all one piece of fabric. Now because it's all piece of fabric, man, you got a lot. You don't have to worry about seams and stuff because I'm pretty sure this part's cut away underneath. I believe that it is. If not, it should be only because this fabric and it will shadow through. Right, exactly. Uh, and I know because I have done a similar Moda kit. Uh, Didn't you do a, a big cat? Yeah, mine was a kitten. So I would I would lean into exactly what this is. And because it's a snowman, um, I'm coming in here and I'm mimicking the hat this way for the and I'm mimicking it this way with black thread because I'm going to do this all custom. And then I'm going to mimic the yeah. thread here. I'm going to do puffy stuff for the red here. I would change to red. And then I would do red for the stripes. I'd come back and do white. I would do pink here. Um, I would do the blue where it's. And I'm going to mimic the shape of the part the body I'm working on right so I'm mimicking all of those shapes go in and do black here 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 and again red red this is just coloring over what's already colored really I'm just following the line that's all this is and now when you get to because I've mimicked the shape of everything else, I'm going to still do that. So his arm's going to be this way. His tummy is this way. Right? His cheeks are this way. And I'm looking at how the face is formed. Right? So when anytime you're dealing with, to me, I'm treating this like I would a portrait kind of quilt. It's I'm with exactly the way our faces kind of meet. So that's how I would do that. Now for this, if I've spent all the time custom custom quilting this, I may not spend as much time on this. I may do an all over meander, but I'm probably gonna do one of Pam's favorite. Is I'm either gonna come in here and to me this looks like a Christmas tree. I'm going to do a Christmas tree in each of those. In the color part. In the color part and leave the other blank. Hmm. Come up and do a Christmas tree. Hmm. Christmas tree. Do to do. And the other part blank. So then I'm quilting everything. Very custom. Okay. Oh, I took, took the, the picture. Thing. Took the thing. I can't do that. Okay, so guess what she said on the applique because you don't spend the amount of money that these digitally printed panels cost just meander over it the whole thing so i definitely that with uh the detail that it deserves and i will say on the background the one thing i would do different i would quilt down the white part and let the color part pop 
This so, is why we're a team. We do everything completely <laughs> opposite. And so when I come in, I am going to drive myself a little crazy. And you can pick one. And you could just pebble that right on in. Or, wait for it. Wait for um, it. Ribbon candy. Yeah. Now the trick is, you know, when you get down to where you're decreasing, you just kind of squiggle out. Yep. But I think that way you're mashing down the, what I would consider the, the white and let Good the colors point. pop. Yeah. I think both ways work. And it's you just could, completely opposite. You could mix up, like pick one consistently or just, you know. Or like every other one do background, then this one do this one. I don't know. Well, you could do both, but man, that's a lot of building. Yes. All right. We are now a rail fence with Christine. Christine, this looks like a rail fence. It's kind of a rail. Fence. There's it some looks hourglass like glass blocks in there. It looks like it's improved a little, which I kind of like. All right. If you're improv, man, you should improv quilting. I like some good graffiti quilting on something that's this. I think it would be kind of interesting, and I don't know how big this is, so that may be, or what it's being used for. So I'm making some, let's say I'm making a, a, assumptions. A, assumptions here, right. So if this is not that big, like it's wall hanging size, then you can quilt the out of it. Um, and what I think would be really interesting Oh, I'd love to do this. This looks fun. So I think I would do kind of a raindrop kind of feather, right? And like we said earlier with the feathers, raindrop feathers are super easy because they're coming straight down and you're going right back up to the top. And then you're coming straight down again. And then you're going right back up to the top. And what I would do is I would do them even. Uneven lengths. I would do some. That kind of a little Jen King Willie. It feels, yeah, it does. It reminds me of like her gypsy wife pattern. Right, yeah. And then if you need to, um, I wouldn't quilt this a ton. I would stitch in the ditch so you could get it down. But I wouldn't quilt some of this. I would let those raindrops just be standing out kind of against this. And if it, if you need to, I would quilt this more, this dark. I would do a meander really thick here. If you had to, do lighter. And then do really big down here. If you don't want to stitch in the ditch. That way this is quilt. Now I'm assuming this is a wall hanging when I say that too. Because if this is a full size quilt it needs to be evenly quilted if it's a wall hanging you can get away with not quilting stuff mm -hmm. because it's an artistic you know choice at that point all right i came at it differently <laughs> as we as we would we are not it. shocked but. so what stood out to me was there's vertical lines and there's horizontal lines and there's a lot of contrast and are meeting so to me you need to treat your rail pieces so you get kind of this windmill looking shape with the rail fence pieces and you know obviously lighter ones here closer to where the camera is and darker ones there. and so I am inclined to say like oh those get treated one way and because it's such an angle I, don't, you, I would not come in, unlike you, with feathers because it's it's an angular kind of more modern. And I'm trying to, when you look at what some of the fabric is represent, it looks like tiny mushrooms, it looks like little flowers, um, or like maybe plus signs. So I'm inclined to come in with an angular pattern and whether that is coming at with a treatment that mimics that windmill shape just to fill it in. If you think of feathers with a lot of corners and 90 degree angles um, but still taking in that swirl effect and when you get to the background pieces which is basically uh, it's going to be this kind of shape and it encompasses some quarter square triangle some other things and that I think gets a background filler treatment and I think something that works real well for this is that kind of geometric 
square. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah. yeah. I think I was looking at it when I, um, with the feather, raindrop feathers, is this goes from dark to light. I saw this falling, you know, kind of thing. And that's really interesting, but I like I, and that's a neat quilt. All right, finish strong. Well, this is Chris's Judy Niemeyer quilt. And I don't remember if her it, exact pattern that this is. I, and it may not be a Judy Niemeyer quilt. If it's, it is, it's Judy Niemeyer esque. Yes. Definitely. So um, a lot of these are very quilted when I've seen them. And I, if it if it is one of Judy's patterns, she does sell like. A pre-programmed quilting designs that you just like right. load up align everything and then... right um so there's a couple of different things you're dealing with here you're dealing with spiky and then you're dealing with these um diamonds. blades for the diamonds yeah so if you did orange peel on the diamonds for each of the diamonds that would take care of those then if you go in for the spiky you've got you know i think you got to get in there with a the ruler because those are real tiny points. They are. They are. Um, you could, if you're dealing with a spike, you could come in and do the hooks kind of thing to work your way up the spike. Um, and do that in each one. This needs to be almost consistent on however you treat it. So if you're doing what I think this bodes well to... Do, it's not graffiti quilting all over it. That wouldn't work well for me. The, you, however you treat the spike, you need to be treat this spike and this spike and this spike and this spike right. and this spike. You need consistency. You need consistency. So whatever design is. Um, now, are you using that same thing from there here? Be, yeah. And even on the yeah. white. Or if you're not using the exact same thing, what you're doing is you're just adding an element to it. So if I'm doing this hook thing on the smaller ones, then I may do a hook and then a circle, a circle, a circle, right? Maybe adding for this one mm -hmm. where these are just the hook. And then for the final one, you may add a feather here. Yeah, because you've got more breathing of, room at the base. Right. So you come out and do something like this at the base to fill those up. This is also something that um, it's going to be, I mean. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of but work. But you already did a lot of work to get the top put together. Go on. Don't. I think what I see a lot of people do or they want to tend to do is like, oh, my gosh, I got the top done. And I'm done. And, like, no, you're not. You're halfway there. The quilt is not made yet. So, all that energy that you put into making something as complicated and gorgeous as this is, spend the time to get that look mm -hmm. continued through the quilting. That's my opinion. Again, you can meander and overall this all you want, but wow, it's it's got a lot of potential to be really unique. You know, whether it's you on this kind of piece and you do a, you know, something like this on the edge to... Yeah, because the trick there is that you're then using these seam intersections yeah. as your guide points. You don't, it's less marking, which is right. good. Right, yeah. Do something like that. Um, you can have a secondary motif to wear these. And then when you do a secondary motif, kind of pushing it where the spikes are pushing mm. it out kind of deal. Um, and you can do all kinds of stuff in there. This is, these are gorgeous when they're done. They're just beautiful. I got nothing to add. I'm you can honest. I'm like, yes. <laughs> yes, do this. <laughs> do, like, yeah. And then, you know, you're going to treat your, you're going to treat your, what, right. your flying geese, you know, whether it's. They're a less spiky version of the spike. Right. I would treat everything separate and unique, and but have consistency. So if you're doing that thing and this, it needs to be in every one of them. If you're doing this and this specific spike, do this every specific spike. You know, this and all of these. This goes in. This goes in all the diamonds. And there's nothing to say that you couldn't pick like 
there's a center diamond, see, through this hole to that point. So that those center diamonds could have something fancy. Something fancy. And that doesn't look like super special just when you draw out one. But if you continue that motif all the way around, people are so impressed. And it doesn't have to be break any of these down into the elements. Mm -hmm. Don't look at some of this stuff and get so overwhelmed and go, oh my gosh, I could never do that. Yeah, you can. You can like you did 50 bajillion spikes. You can do this motif 50 bajillion times all those spikes and guess what? It's still going to work. So I have one idea okay. that I will throw you out do. in terms of treatment for these diamond shapes. Um, and it's something that I call jewel box. Okay. It's jewel, but I, somehow I put a box in there. So when you come in from the corner and it requires a ruler, but it's something that you can practice on pretty easy. You come in about a half an inch or a quarter inch, whatever looks best for the piece. And then you do a straight line and then you do that. And you come back. Oh, you're back. giving it that 3D kind of frame effect. Yes. That's cool. And then you come out here and you move on to your next one. And that gives it a little bit of detail without being like a holy overwhelming amount of stuff. Right. And you can always come in here and do the, you know, in all of your jewel boxes. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, you can get crazy on these things. But my next question. Is what are you using this for? If this is on somebody's bed, don't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just. The more quilting you add, the stiffer it becomes, and it's not comfortable. It is not, it's not really a snuggly blanket. So, anyway. All right. So, thank you, Christina, and that all of the Deb and Debras and Debs in the world. Yes, and exactly. And the ones who sent us pictures. So, right. uh, if you are watching this today, that it drops, we are. In Houston at Quilt Market, which is well, and uh, stay tuned to Instagram for some of our hijinks there. And uh, we are going to be back next week, I think, with a regular episode. Okay. I will have to check the calendar to confirm, but next Friday there'll be something else posted on the channel. So uh, stay tuned. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll be back soon.